On today's program, we'll discuss Jeet Kune Do training methods. We'll also reply to a few comments that were made on the I Love Jeet Kune Do page, and we'll answer a few questions about a uh, couple questions, or maybe just one about uh, Jeet Kune Do, uh, Do ranks and belt system that that type of stuff. I am Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and this is the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Um, Regarding the, the comments that were received on the I Love Jeet Kune Do page, uh, there was a discussion about technique and uh, one person's opinion was that uh, the Jeet Kune Do instructors seem to, to teach, um, I guess you could almost say they seem to teach the same thing differently or they seem to teach different things. And um, that's absolutely true, but uh, be, and that's because there's no magic blueprint or fixed method that was passed on uh, from Bruce Lee to his main students who then in turn passed it on to their main students. It's always been somewhat of a, fle let's call it a flexible uh, lesson plan, a flexible game plan. And um, there, there's no standard operating uh, procedure. There's no, no manual, so to speak, for, for Jeet Kune Do. But I dare say that a highly skilled, competent Jeet Kune Do instructor, among that group, you will find a certain similarity in their approach and in the structure of what they're teaching. So, for example, um, if you take a look at my approach to, to teaching and training, uh, and then you compare and contrast it with, uh, let's say, Chris Kent, uh, Cass Magda, um, Tim Tackett, uh, uh, Rick Fay, to name to name a few. Even though our material won't be identical, you will be able to point out certain commonalities and certain similarities uh, at at different times in the training, and that's because we're all Jeet Kune Do practitioners, we're all Jeet Kune Do students, we're all Jeet Kune Do instructors. And we have, to a certain degree, the, um, the, 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 the same lineage in that we are all uh, primarily trained by Dan and Asano. When we talk about the commonality in, in training methods or training approaches, um, for example, all those people I mentioned will probably emphasize things like the four ranges of combat, things like the five ways of attack, uh, things like the five ways of defense, but where, but you might find subtle changes where, for example, I always teach that it's called the four ranges of combat traditionally and historically, but we have renamed it to be the four skills of empty-handed combat, which in turn was a name that I formulated based on a conversation and discussion that I had with my senior, Cass Magda, uh, a number of years ago. And um, the five ways of attack and their, their uh, counterpart, the five ways of defense, I, have, I tend to call the five ways of defense the five ways of counter-offense. Um, then some of us might examine those aspects of, of Jeet Kune Do and stick to empty-handed training when, when we're dealing with those. But then some people might expand that concept of um, state, uh, not stages of combat, that concept of four ranges of combat or the five ways of attack and, and put that into your, your Muay Thai training, uh, put it into your Kali training uh, as, as an example. It, which brings me to a second comment that was made, which is that there is no Eskrima in Jeet Kune Do. I believe that that statement has its origins in reputable uh, circumstances. For example, in this, um, in this Jeet Kune Do book, The Arsenal of Self-Expression, which I, I highly recommend, um, in here it, it, there's, a, there's a note from the author that says, uh, it says that there's been much malicious misrepresentation of Bruce Lee's art. And um, in accordance with the saying, talent borrows and genius steals, Almost all of the technical notes that, com that comprise the Tao, Jeet Kune Do, and commentaries on the martial way are passages that come from other sources. 
you will see that there are no references to Wing Chun, Kali, or Eskrima. There's also very little coverage of grappling techniques. This is why there are only nine pages of grappling techniques in the Tao. And um, that's true. It's a, it's, a legitimate, um, it's a legitimate observation from a highly skilled and highly talented Jeet Kune Do practitioner. However, I've always maintained that you'll hear a lot of people, they'll, you know, even perhaps sometimes non-martial artists, they'll tell you that they've read the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, right, in whichever, whichever version you happen to have, but you seldom hear them uh, saying that they went past the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. I think that uh, John Little's Jeet Kune Do series of books, I think John Little has written, what, 9, 11, 13 books on, on Jeet Kune Do. If you're not reading those, then you're missing out on a, a lot of information because the Tao of Jeet Kune Do was, uh, let's say, history's first glimpse into Bruce Lee's um, notebooks. But subsequent to that, with his own Jeet Kune Do series, John Little uh, gained as, um, access to much more of Bruce Lee's writings. And so I think that in, for example, this book, The Commentaries on the Martial Way, there is probably more notes on grappling in, uh, in, in this book than there are in the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. And uh, there's also a lot more uh, precise and concise information about Bruce Lee's transformation from one way to, to the other. And we'll, we'll get into that as, as we go along. So to, for the, the person who said that there is no Eskrima in, uh, in Jeet Kune Do, I think that's, that, that's probably somewhere where um, he, he forms that opinion. I venture to say that Bruce Lee definitely spent some time with Filipino martial arts as is evidenced by his performance in Enter the Dragon with uh, the double stick. And then also his um, world-renowned performance with what in Okinawan martial arts I guess is called a nunchaku, which we call the um, tabak tuyok or olisi tuyok in the Filipino martial arts. Um, And then this, this idea that Bruce Lee limited himself to simply fencing, Wing Chun, and boxing, I think that in his writings, he uh, destroys that idea later on. And I think it was just as a matter of, of his own uh, natural evolution. So, for example, let me see if I can put my hands on... Uh, on, on, yeah, okay, I have that note right here. So, 
um, again, it's in the uh, commentaries on the Marshall Way book. And um, there's a thing here where he says, I'm having a Gung Fu system drawn up. This system is a combination of chiefly Wing Chun, fencing, and boxing. As for Gung Fu training, I'll have them written down when it's finished. Boy, will it be it. So obviously, yes, there, there was a point at which Bruce Lee, um, his style, his system was going to be based on those three arts. But uh, in, let's see, it's in this other, this other book, which I highly recommend. This is Letters um, of the Dragon. So this, these are representations of different uh, letters that Bruce Lee wrote at different points in his life. And um, in this one, in a letter to his Wing Chun senior, uh, William Chung, uh, Cedra Bruce says, this is uh, a letter that was mailed on January 4th, 1969. And uh, he says, William, I've lost faith in the Chinese classical arts, though I still call mine Chinese, because basically all styles are products of land swimming, even the Wing Chun school. Now, people who don't have an in-depth understanding of Bruce Lee and, and uh, Jeet Kune Do might think that in that letter, in that statement, he's actually, um, uh, uh, let's say, insulting the Wing Chun system. And that's not what's going on at all. Bruce Lee is just being honest and true to his, his personal experience and to his evolution as a martial artist. And so I'll say it one more time. Yes, there is... There was a, a time, and it is evidenced, when Bruce Lee's system was chiefly comprised or composed of Wing Chun, fencing, and boxing. But then, as we can see in later stages of his uh, development, he went beyond that. Um, so if subsequent to that, uh, some of his students or some of his followers decide to apply the concepts of Jeet Kune Do, the training principles, the guidelines, in something like Filipino Kali, in something like Muay Thai, in something like Penjak Silat, then I don't think that that is um, some some kind of a, a violation of the rules for, for which one should be like executed or something. All right.